Over the last few years, I've helped thousands of brands with their PPC. I've audited countless accounts and I've hired dozens of PPC specialists. I've seen and made every single mistake possible with Amazon PPC. And in this video, I'll lay them all out for you so that you can avoid making them in your own account. The first and biggest mistake I see is sellers trying to advertise the entire catalog. I used to make this mistake myself. I thought the more products I advertise, the more revenue will do. But the truth is with Amazon, around 80% of products will never do that well, or at least well enough to actually move the needle for you. For 80% of products, the market is going to be too small for you to gain significant momentum. The CPCs or margins won't work out for you to be able to turn a profit, or the product isn't going to be that good, or be able to keep up with competition. So instead, what you should be doing is focusing on that 20% and putting as much money as possible into that 20%, which will then produce 80% of sales and grow the entire account. Because if you can grow the products that produce 80% of sales 20%, the entire account goes up 16%. If you grow a tiny product 100%, that might not even move the needle by 1% for you. So focus on that top 20% of products and then keep launching products every single month, every quarter, depending on your budget. Launch new products so that you can get as many products in that 20% league as you can. Because most product launches won't work. One out of three product launches are usually profitable. The other two will break even or lose money. Out of that third, around half of them will never be that significant for you. So it takes around 10 to 12 product launches to hit a home run. So I'll just be launching as much products as possible to any account that I work with, at least advising them to. And that usually leads to more top 20% products, which grows the overall account and keeps me from having to spend my budget on low performing products. Another major sin when it comes to Amazon ads is constantly turning your ads on and off. I've worked with a seller that was doing $2 million a year and his business was doing pretty well and he had a good tackles and a reasonable ACOS. But his main issue was that he constantly turned his ads on and off. So he'd run his ads for a bit, then he'd fire his agency, he'd switch his ads off for three months, he'd hire someone else, they'd set up ads, his sales would go up, he'd switch them off, then he'd turn them back on two weeks later, then he'd run out of stock, so the ads would go off again. And he kept doing this, and over the course of two years, he completely lost his market share and was only doing around $30,000, $40,000 a month by the end of it. So he lost almost his entire business, and since the cash flow wasn't able to keep up with his expenditure, he ended up having to shut down, right? So number one rule is never turn ads on and off. Keep your ads running at all times. Plan your inventory for the amount of ad spend you're planning to spend, right? If you're going to spend a lot, keep a lot in stock. If you don't have that much in stock or your lead time is super long, just don't spend that much, but don't keep turning your ads on and off. As soon as you turn those ads off, you're going to start to lose your organic rank. You're going to lose your ad sales. You're going to lose your BSR everything's going to start going downhill and it's very, very tough to regain all of this, right? You're going to have to keep spending for a very long time to regain that same level of momentum. So you essentially start over from zero. And if you do this for a long time and your competitors are spending at full speed, eventually what's going to happen is they're going to eat up all of the market share and you're going to be left with a fraction of what you once had, right? Because your competitors aren't standing still. Your competitors are moving. They're launching new variations, new products. They're spending more on ads. You can't just take a break from ads for a few months and come back and find everything as it was. So never take a break from ads. Always stay in stock and always spend proportionally to the amount of inventory that you have so that you never run out of stock and you never have to pause these ads because you're about to run out of stock, right? That's rule number one of Amazon ads. This also ties in with my third mistake, which is not keeping momentum on track with on-hand inventory. Many times we've had sellers come in and they're like, safe, hey, I want to scale. I want to grow this business. I want to sell more inventory. And we start working with them on their ads and we use our tool to launch new campaigns for them. They start increasing their sales and their spend and they're very happy with it. But then they realize they're about to go out of stock. They end up going out of stock in a week. The entire business has no product to sell and they're back to zero revenue pretty much. And they have to wait a few months to actually get the product in from their manufacturer, which is usually all the way over in China. Right? So the entire business is semi shut down for a few months. And then once they actually get this product in, they're not going to have any of the organic crank they had. They're not going to have the same BSR they had. They're not going to have the same ad sales they've had. And it's very common to actually get the product back in and start running ads and see that your tackles is much higher than when you left it. And your ACoS is also a lot higher than when you had what you had before you ran out of stock. So you have to be very careful with this. You can't afford to go out of stock. If you don't have the inventory, don't scale. And if you want to scale, make sure you have enough units and a lot more than what you'd usually sell because you're expecting some growth in the amount of units that you're selling per month. 
So always keep enough inventory on hand and always keep your ad spend proportional to the amount of units that you have. Another big mistake I see is focusing too much on tackles. I usually see this with legacy sellers. They've been selling for a decade plus and they're used to getting a very low tackles because ads used to be a lot cheaper. And right now they can't stomach the fact that the average tackles is like 15%. So what ends up happening is they under advertise all of their catalog because they want it all to be super high margin. They want all of their ads to run to very low ACOS. They want to get an extremely low tackles. What ends up happening is that they're no longer competitive, right? When they're no longer competitive, all of their competitors, some of them from China, some of them are funded, some of them are backed by aggregators and they have a lot of money to spend. A lot of these guys are coming in and they're spending a ton on Amazon ads. They're getting top of search, they're getting all of the top placements and they're showing up in the places that this big seller used to show up because this big seller was launching all of these products at a point in time where most of the placements were organic. A lot of these placements are gone right now and were replaced by sponsored products placements, sponsored brand placements, and all of the organic placements were pushed down the page. So based on that, they're already getting less traffic because their organic placements were pushed down. And then the competition that's spending a lot of money on ads is also technically more relevant for those keywords right now because they're driving higher volume. So they're also taking up all of those organic positions. So what ends up happening is that seller that's so caught up on having a 5% tackles or less, some of them want the two, 3% tackles. What ends up happening to that seller is they get outcompeted by people from China or people with a lot of budget or bigger brands that are non-Amazon native that are now coming onto the platform. These people outcompete the legacy seller and the legacy seller ends up losing market share slowly over time until they find out that they're down like 40%, 50% year over year. At that point, it's very difficult to reverse this revenue trend and get them back to where they were. Another big mistake I see is when sellers focus on ACoS only. What usually happens is they start running their ads and they see that their ads are running at a 30-35% ACoS, sometimes higher, and they're worried because that's their entire margin. Or maybe even they're losing money on this. Maybe their margin is 25%, their ads run at 40%, they're losing 15% on every single order, and that's obviously not good business in their mind. And they start switching the ads off, they start dropping the bids, they start decreasing their budgets, and they're worried because every single sale that they make, they lose money on. So it doesn't make sense to keep selling anymore. That's what's running through their head. And it's completely wrong because when you make an advertising sale, number one, that increases your sales volume on that keyword, which means you could potentially rank higher and actually get ad free sales or organic sales, which will decrease your tackles and make you profitable. And then the second thing is if you're selling a replenishable product, you could potentially get repeat orders. So I have big brands that I'm working with that are spending close to a million a month that are at 80% ACoS and they're fine with it because that 80% ACoS sale is probably going to lead to a second, third, fourth, and fifth order. And that's going to more than make up for the initial advertising cost that they put into selling that first product. So ACoS on its own is a very weak metric. It doesn't really mean much. You can use it to organize your campaigns and set like different goals for them. That's what you do with our software. Like you could have a branded ACoS target, an ACoS target for keywords you want to rank on, an ACoS target for random generic keywords and so on. It's a good way to organize your campaigns and decide how to change your bids. But at the same time, you can't get carried away with it and start measuring your profitability against ACoS because it doesn't really mean anything because it doesn't take into account the repeat purchases and the organic sales that you're going to get as a result of this advertising sale. So it almost has nothing to do with net profit. Another huge mistake I see sellers make is spending too much on branded. This usually happens with or without the seller knowing because sometimes the seller just hires an agency or a freelancer and has them run their ads. And what this agency or freelancer usually does is that they see that branded is performing a lot better in terms of ACoS and they know they can bring down the ACoS and tackles of the account by investing only in branded. So a lot of them will sneakily start putting all of the money into branded or even mix the campaigns. Like they'll put some branded keywords and non-branded campaigns to make the performance look better. And in the end, 70-80% of your budget ends up going to branded. ACOS looks super good, tackles look super good, but there's no incremental revenue and there's no growth. So a lot of sellers have this happening to them without them knowing. A lot of sellers are knowingly doing this to themselves because they see that generic has a much higher ACoS, like they're getting 15% on branded or 10% on branded and like 40% on generic. Like, oh no, I'd rather just get that 10-15%, right? Then they stop spending on generic and their whole business is just based on them spending on their own brand keywords, getting sales from that. And then that's it. They never grow. They never add incremental revenue. They never increase their ad spend. That's it. That's their whole business. They're just spending on branded, 
getting those rendered orders, and that's it. That's the end of the day for them. The issue is that if you do this, number one, your banded search volume could go down at any time. At that point, your business is at risk. Number two, you're wasting a lot of money because either way, you are going to show up for those branded keywords organically. That doesn't mean you shouldn't advertise on branded, but it means that excessively spending on branded, excessively bidding on branded keywords is usually a bad idea. Even if the ACoS is good, you're almost always going to be wasting money because you're going to get a certain percentage of the branded orders you would have gotten without ads anyways. So instead of measuring the ACoS on the entire amount of branded sales you got, you should measure it only on the incremental branded sales that you would have lost if you didn't run those branded ads. And the way you can do that is you can go into the search query performance report, turn off branded ads and figure out for a month how many sales you lost and compare that to that previous period. And then you can divide the branded ad spend by that lost revenue and you can see what the actual true tackles on that is. And usually it's very high. You'll find that the tackles on that is like 50, 60 percent plus. I had a seller that you work with that was advertising on Bandit only, turn off all of their campaigns for a few weeks. And that seller was supposedly getting like 40% of revenue from ads. Turns out once we turned off all of those campaigns, the revenue continued coming in because it was all branded anyways. Revenue ended up going down 5% and they saved six figures a month in ad spend. So branded is good to advertise on. You just want to minimize your budget there and make sure that most of your spend is going towards generic targets and generic ASIN targets because you don't want to spend all your money on branded unless you're into wasting your money and preventing your business from growing. Okay, that's it for this video. These are the six mistakes that either I've made or I've seen others make. A lot of these might sound trivial, but I've seen people lose tens of millions of dollars per year over these. So if you're making these mistakes or you think your agencies might be making these mistakes, make sure it's not happening. Go in and fix it yourself. And if you need our help, just reach out on our website, www.aihello.com or just email me directly, safe at and explain to me what your case is. Thank you so much for watching this video and I hope you have a great day.